Hello, hello. Hello. How's everyone? Hello, Arthur. Doing well. Awesome. Uh, we had a little change of plans today. Uh, Sequinder learned that uh, her institution no longer has Ambase subscription. Uh, so we just decided to go through the PubMed experience with her and kind of learn how she uses the tool and uh, possibly uh, will give us some insights on um, the applicability of AI power literature review tool to help her research um, flows. So I'll, I'll let uh, Sequinder um, take over the screen and um, kind of start with the outline how she uses the PubMed as a tool for research and uh, just go through a couple of examples. Hey, we can see you, but we can't hear you. Hello. Yay, we can hear you now. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, is that live at the beach? <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Actually, I'm in my office, so that's the... I can put the screen here. It's a camera which has been... So can you enable me to share the screen? Oh, hold on one second. You should be able to do that now. Okay. Try now. Yeah, sure. So, so we do routinely use PubMed. So PubMed is the main in if if I talk about medical sciences, PubMed is the main search engine which we use it routinely. And mainly because uh, it's not only the citations from the Medline, but at the same time, we can get full access. If I go for, uh, if I go towards a point that there are certain articles which are freely available to everyone, and mainly it is made available by National Institute of Health. And uh, at one particular time point, we can get as many as 30 million citations for biomedical literature. And overall, PubMed uh, and many times the article, even if before the final print, it comes onto the PubMed. So even if the preprints are there many times, and uh, there are many links in the PubMed which help us to get connected to those articles. So when I search the PubMed article, many times my search is a simple search, like keyword search, where I am not reviewing the full literature, but I'm updating my literature, up, updating myself on the recent literature. So it is actually like, let's say I'm working on a pancreatic cancer, so I will put pancreatic cancer. And there I will try to figure out what new has come up, who has published what is, and if I found some very interesting article, I just go through that article, download it, read through it, and then I see what was referred in that particular article, and what are the recent citations of that article. Um, at the same time, let's say I want to write a review or I want to review a literature which is totally new to me. So in that case, I try to do for the subject search. In that, what happens? So we go for medical subject headings. So permit what PubMed does. So whenever a new article comes to the PubMed, so there are indexers who man, which manually go through each and every article and figure out that what this article is about and which um, medical subject heading it should go for. So they they every article is associated with medical subject heading. So in this way, what happens that uh, we can we can family uh, so we can categorize each and every article. So uh, when it is a subject search, it is very and based on the mesh index indexing kind of thing it is very precise and uh, it saves us a lot of time that we don't have to make different different kind of searches uh, but it works on the defined topic but the only issue is that if i want to see very recent article 
it doesn't come there. So I'll go through the PubMed and I'll show you how we do it. But at the same time, whenever I have a topic, I'll break the topic into, into individual concepts like pancreatic cancer, pancreatic neoplasm, all those things. And then I can I either use the quotations uh, to figure out the phrases. Like if I want to take out the articles which are based on the pancreatic cancer, what I will do, I'll just put the quotation around the pancreatic cancer. And uh, I can uh, like pancreatic cancer and cystic lesions. So and or and not work same way that we want to have one or the other uh, search engine. And at the same time, PubMed do has a truncation point of view where if I want to figure out bacteria, bacterium, bactericidal, if I put a star uh, and a steric, I can figure out everything over there. So uh, at the, now I, what I will do, I'll go to the PubMed and I'll show you how I do it. So this is the, can I can you see the permit? Uh, we can see the word document. Okay, stop shit. So this is the reason. So PubMed's original site was like this. So, and, and now it is called legacy. And by the end of the May, what they have done, they have generated a new site, which I will go now. So this is the new one. Let's say I want to go for pancreatic cancer. So it, it will help me to identify all those articles which are uh, uh, there uh, at the same time. So I can figure out there are more than 100,000 articles on pancreatic cancer. I have made the display option recent. So, but at the same time, you we can sort the uh, sort the articles by best match, which is a very new addition to the uh, permit by the publication date, by the first author, and as well as the journal. So why this is important? Best match so that whatever criteria we are selecting, we can figure out on that particular criteria. Most recent help us because we keep on updating ourselves. What new has come? If I'm working on a particular molecule like mug 5 ac I'll go every day. Every researcher, almost on the daily basis or alternative basis, alternate days, goes to the PubMed and look at the most recent article. Uh, first author help us to that which group has published it and first author as well as the corresponding author help us in that. And why is the journal important? So every journal in the medical sciences or in every field has a citation index. So more cited that article is more read overall read article has higher impact factor. So and sometimes like something publishing from science nature has very though I'm not saying the categorization, but general does matter. And uh, many times we wanna see that from where, which article it is coming up. And at the same time, um, now I know um, one, this is the display options. I have made it most recent, but at the same time, if you see uh, the, the publication started around 1932, and uh, they are uh, up to recent articles are there. So what we can do if I want that, I just want articles from 2006 to 2021, it will reset it. If So once this is done, yes, I can, uh, no, I just wanted the articles in 2021, very recent articles, those 12,000 articles are there. I want to go for pancreatic cancer and cystic so that way I will find out that because cystic lesion is a type which, which, has, the, which has been associated with the pancreatic cancer. I want to categorize this. As, I want to particularly classify the article. I can go by that way. Uh, so I don't want, so normally it's, it's a library and it's a citation library where only abstracts are there. And many times, many, many article doesn't have full text articles, but there is a PMC that uh, NIH has made the conditions that certain articles should be freely available to the public, which are funded by 
uh, NIH. So many times through PNC, I can access all those articles. I can look into those uh, articles and I can search through them, everything like that. And at the same time, depending upon my condition, I keep on searching and changing my keywords to figure out what exactly is unique in those articles and what kind of articles I want. Let's say I am in, interested in this article. So from here, I can go to the full text of this article. At the same time, I can see what kind of similar articles are there. What else has been published? Uh, is it of my interest or not? And uh, that is what I look into it. At the same time, um, I can add it to my favorites that I want to see this article in the later point of view. I can, can create my NCBI account and I can go there and look into it over, over the time being. At the same time, uh, what happens that uh, 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 who has cited this article, who, who worked on this article and uh, used this article for his research, I want to see. Uh, 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 this is the references with regard to that, uh, let's say I want to cite this article. I want to go ahead and use this article for my studies. I can just um, use exactly this citation as such, and I can even go and download it, and I can copy it and keep it for my future savings. Uh, that's uh, about it. So uh, sometimes I go to the similar articles, and they can they can go there. Let's say I like some article, I go to the clipboard, and I add that article to the clipboard. Let's say I wanted these articles. So I will send it to the clipboard. So now those articles are for uh, temporary timing for um, one day. They will be saved in the clipboard and I can use those articles from there and I can go to the clipboard and I can see oh, what articles I have saved. And if I need to download, if I need to keep them in my other files, I can do that. Um, there is another option called uh, um, send to collections. It, it, it is a permanent collections, which is normally associated with my NCA, NCBI account. And at the same time, every whenever we are writing new article or we are writing new grant, we use citation manager. We where where SuperMed has a tendency that it can create a file, and it so this file is there which can which I can open and freely use it for my purposes. So so see all those article has been transferred by PubMed to my citation, my endnote, where I, wherever I can use these particles in my text file without any uh, um, hassles. This is a general search which I normally do for each and every uh, article. Let's say I want to, in addition to this, I can search uh, author's name. Mm. I like somebody and uh, 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 whose work I'm interested in. Uh, so, but I want to see that person has published what article. So, I can see all the articles from um, that PI or that investigator easily, and I can even follow his trajectory over the time being. How many publications has been published by that article? These are the general kind of search uh, and. Uh, how many articles he has published in the last few years. Everything is available through the public. At the same time, uh, I was talking about uh, uh, a mess, mess database. Uh, so at this, we can go for the advanced search uh, where we can add the fields like I want pancreatic cancer and colon cancer, and I can add those search engines. Those things can be done through the PubMed. Uh, at the same, um, this is what we do all the time. In addition, PubMed, uh, in addition to this, what happened that PubMed has many other availabilities. So if you go um, to this site, uh, which is the legacy site for the PubMed, you can see that not only, many times people ask for data sets, that, oh, I want to look into the data sets, where I can avail this data set. So let's say here is a geo data sets. So if I want to see that somebody has published very high scale or global data, so that can I can avail through 
geo data sets so in that every data set whatever is available i can figure out and many of these data sets are available publicly and i can use it for my search for my findings that oh, they used five samples uh, and what are those samples uh, what was these models everything every detail is over there so let me go back to pubmed Quick question. So this is the filter for the papers that actually have data sets uh, linked to them? Uh, this is the, like, this is a separate, uh, yeah. So yeah, all these articles have data set which contain pancreatic cancer, in, in pancreatic cancer sample sets. And geo means geography here? No, no, uh, I think it's gene embedded, uh, gene ontology based data sets. So gene expression mm -hmm. omnibus, this is the uh, full form of it. So that those are the data sets. So yeah. all these are expression data sets, but at the same time, uh, these could be sequencing data set, uh, RNA seq and all those data sets. Earlier, there were a lot of micro arrays were there. So those data sets were there. So those kind of data set I can avail um, from here. At the same time, if you go, so, not only data sets uh, are there, but at the same time, uh, there is cataloging, there is a protein cluster, and so many things we can avail through the um, PubMed. And at the same, like chemi chemical compound, whole PubChem library is there. Wherever I can see the structures of each and every chemical, like uh, um, 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 I want uh, I socks. It's a, it's a drug. So uh, I can see its structure and everything over there. And I can figure out where, mm, where this compound has been used. What is its structure? Uh, all, all, all these things are available through PubMed to me. And when you select MASH, uh, are you searching for a specific MASH uh, kind of uh, item? Or are you searching for papers that mention that uh, MASH uh, uh -oh. item? So the beauty of the MASH terms is like, uh, if you go here, so let's say I am talking about pancreatic cancer, but in 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 biological world, in the PubMed world, what they have done, they have associated each and everything with a medical word. Uh, uh, so if I just one second, uh, so medical subject heading. So what citations has been done, what indexer has done, each and every article they have taken out and used some mesh words. Like, uh, let me show you this one. Uh, so here's the mesh database. And if I can say um, pancreatic cancer here. So, so what happens for pancreatic cancer, the pancreatic neoplasm, so mesh terminology for pancreatic cancer would be pancreatic neoplasm. So uh, in that, they have even defined what is the pancreatic cancer, how it happens, what mm, this pancreatic neoplasm include. And if, if let's say I am making an advanced kind of search thing, so what I will do, I keep on adding to the search builder like they have added pancreatic neoplasm and pancreatic cyst. But at the same time, I want to, to have meta, metastatic. Metastatic is those tissues where uh, the pancreatic cancer has progressed. Uh, instead of, normally it locates in the pancreas, but uh, its cells are now distributing to colon, lung, or the other tissues. So those are called metastatic lesions. So we can even go to the metastatic lesions of the pancreas and so secondary, uh, like these kind of if I go for pancreatic. Like this, they might have not made the word for pancreatic. So in So 
there is no index. So you can observe three, either that terminology would be defined. Sometimes there is no word for that thing. Yeah, makes sense. So it's basically the explorer of mesh that you mm -hmm. can easily build or well, somewhat easily build uh, complex queries. Yes. Yes, and this is the way to make complex query. And uh, so if we want to introduce the specificity um, that yes, we want this kind of query to come out. So we will be using mesh there a lot. So how would you, and uh, I know I'm gonna put you in a spot, but let's uh, imagine that you have um, direction of research that uh, requires you to look at clinical trials uh, or papers, papers about the clinical trials uh, exploring application of some drug within mm -hmm. metastatic patients of older demographics. How would you kind of like approach this? So uh, first of all, uh, if let's say clinical trial on pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So in this, at least in the PubMed, Okay, because I am not at PubMed. I, I need to go back to PubMed. So, ideally for clinical trials, I will go for clinicaltrials.gov site. Mm -hmm. uh, and that website publishes all of the clinical trials uh, data and essays associated with those? Yes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, sometimes when clinical trials are done, people, so one thing is doing clinical trials. Another thing is publishing clinical trials. So PubMed will con contain published clinical trials. Mm -hmm. But clinical trials, GOV will contain all the clinical trials which has been done or which are going on or which has been discontinued. Okay. So, um, so here you would type in pancreatic cancer clinical trial. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a specific drug that you're typically interested in? Uh, like, uh, so, uh, so gold standard for pancreatic cancer is gemcitabine. Mm -hmm. And um, if you would be interested in metastatic patients that are of older demographics. Okay. Uh, um, so normally then, I will put aged patients so that age criteria is there. I understand because uh, since the query has to be very, very strict. So uh, in that in that case, I, I am normally use the age factor and then I go through the abstract and I will try to figure out what age groups has been added to it. But at at the PubMed level, they have not added the age classification to the point. But if, see, see here, your so article type clinical trial. So I can search for that. Mm -hmm. So and in terms of the uh, like specific things like metastatic patients, mm -hmm. do you use MASH uh, within this search uh, box to kind of specify that you're looking at uh, specifically uh, studies where metastatic patients are observed? We can do that. Uh, I have not done, but we can do that. By including MASH um, or just typing in metastatic in here? So I can do that. So so here, mm, metastatic word keyword has come up. Mm -hmm. So, so normally I do a lot of journal search, but let's say I have to start a new article or review thorough thorough review or holistic literature review. Then I will use Mesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here you have two hundred results, yes. and you may mentioned that you will kind of skim through the abstract to understand if it's relevant to you. Yes. Um, what kind of process do you typically use in terms of like the, the skimming through the abstract? Do you just scan for um, like combination of keywords or? So, uh, so I, let's say I want to see that which drugs are working best for the metastatic patients, right? So to me, the survival outcome would be the key factor. 
that whether patient has survived and in compared to the placebo or in compared to the gold standard how improved survival is there so which are the effective drugs over there so for each and every i would have a definite parameters in my mind got it so if you would open this uh well first of all if we're looking at the first five papers uh, mm -hmm. how do you even determine which one to click into so so it depends upon like uh, you know what could you so this is gallbladder cancer mm -hmm. oh. so like not yeah real. Yeah, so might be it contain pancreatic in their keywords somewhere, but at the same time, so liposomal adenotic in metastatic pancreatic adenocarcinoma in Asian patients, subgroup analysis of this. So now uh, it depends upon what I'm calling for. So what exactly I am looking into it, and then that aspect I will be exploring further. So, so if see, you're looking, yeah, so go ahead. This, this study, dose escalation trial of D1 inhibitor in combination with gemcitabine and radiation for, with locally advanced pancreatic cancer. So I will be looking into, so what, what is the outcome of this? So, uh, so first I will go and see the conclusion of the study. Even many times I will look in, so I have read it and I understand what they have done. So I, I will finally see the overall survival is substantially higher than prior results combining gemcitabine with radiation therapy. So see, they, whatever I was thinking, I, only those drugs which improve the survival or which improves the disease-free survival become pertinent to us, right? So we will look into those aspects. Now, see, they have given into the clinical trial. I can go at the clinical trial, what exactly was done and how it was done. Every, every information would be there. Got it. So kind of like here, you would see the actual tables, right? With the, yes. the demographics, the survival rate. So, uh, so one thing is disease-free survival, um, uh, progression-free survival, overall survival. So all those parameters will be considered by me. Is it, uh, can, uh, can you open that clinical trial uh, link and see the, the actual table of the... Mm -hmm. So this one? Got it. Okay. And, uh, but does it say like demographics and... So like age. Oh, they got have... it. Mm -hmm. They have given all the criteria on that. Great. So, how much was the maximum tolerated dose? What was the drug name? How which combinations they have given? So they would be sorting out each and every amount. So when, as a lit, uh, so uh, as a researcher or investigator, uh, if I am starting on something new, first I will look into at least I will go through three to four review articles, which has been published in the past instead of exploring each and every new clinical trial, I will be have creating my baseline that what exactly has been done, what are the issues at present for that particular therapy, how it can be improved, and uh, for the improvement, what criteria and what kind of clinical trials are going on. And at the same time, in addition to that, to that when we look into it, we look into two beauty, two main aspects is that innovation and significance. So whatever, anybody is doing whatever new clinical trial is there is there there any advancement in the field going on with that and at the same time does it really has an importance to the study or not let's say does it really improve the cancer patient survival like the pancreatic cancer patient has a very poor survival rate uh, and sometimes uh, at the late stages it's not more than even six months so does the drug provide some toxicity to it all those conditions will become the main criteria of mine yeah makes sense so in terms of those kind of like meta-analysis queries uh, mm -hmm. if we go back to PubMed and let's say that you're explore, exploring the correlation between um, uh, diabetes and pancreatic cancer mm -hmm. uh, or um, again for let's say older demographics mm -hmm. uh, maybe you, you can type in that query and for us 
to, to also go through the first five results and understand um, the thought process, how, how you're scanning through results. Mm -hmm. So not the clinical trial, but more like the... Uh, Pancreatic cancer and diabetes. Type. Yeah. Yeah. And, so one and thing older is... demographics. So I don't want a clinical trial here, right? Mm -hmm. So here is there. So see, I, I just put aged. So diabetes mellitus in middle aged and elderly population and its association with pancreatic cancer and updated review. So that has come up. Multiplexing illness. This article, like, uh, it doesn't tell me much about it. But at, at the same time, it has pancreatic beta cells. So pancreas and diabetes has a very strong association. And somewhere, all the insulin, glucagon, the hormone, the key hormone, which are involved in the sugar metabolism, are released by uh, pancreas. So uh, you will see a lot other articles, too because uh, islets are the key producer for these hormones and they are part of the pancreas. So association of glycated hemoglobin levels with risk of pancreatic cancer. So let's say I am asking you pancreatic cancer and diabetes and age. So see, pancreatic cancer is the age of uh, disease of age. Older patients will have higher chances of getting pancreatic cancer. Though it is very rare disease, but age leads to the increased cases of pancreatic cancer. At the same time, what happens that diabetes has come up as a risk factor for pancreatic cancer. So recent studies have suggested that sometimes a person is a 50 year old and uh, or a 60 year old, he has not never having a diabetes. N now he has started diabetes at 50 or that is late age group has started diabetes. Those patients can develop pancreatic cancer within the coming two, three months, or no, two, three years. So at, it means it's a symptom of the disease. So when I am asking this question, before even asking this question, I would have certain thing in my mind, like why you want to search pancreatic cancer and diabetes and age. Then only I will filter my articles further. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And in terms of you kind of building these uh, queries from, you know, one term and another term and another term, how do you typically approach uh, kind of, let's say, the mental space of all the keywords that, that you have in your mind? I didn't get your question. <laughs> so let me rephrase that. So let's say that you, your direction of research is pancreatic cancer and you're exploring some hypothesis about diabetes. Um, there are some things that uh, intersect, right? Let's say there are some, um, you know, processes in, in, the, um, in, in the pancreas that might be relevant to this topic in terms of diabetes, um, like acute pancreas, Pancreas, uh, pancreas, yeah. Um, how do you like? How do you determine? Should I include this in in this query, or or should I not? And what are the like all of these keywords that might be relevant? So okay, so pancreatitis um, is that also a symptom um, or a risk factor for pancreatic cancer. Same thing is diabetes mellitus. At the same time, patients who have diabetes might not have pancreatitis or they may have pancreatitis. Uh, and there might be different symptoms which are totally distinct from each other or they might have some merging together. So my question, if I'm interested in pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer, so I won't bring diabetes into it. Up to that time, I want to see that what is the association of another confounding factor that is diabetes in, in this whole picture. Mm -hmm. So you kind of build uh, on top of uh, the research that you do. And as you progress, you build up the terms. Yes. So I, uh, so uh, 
inclusivity and exclusivity will be determined by so many times as a researcher what we need to do we we make new hypothesis new ideas so what your question is heading towards is an hypothesis so your question is that oh patients who has diabetes as well as pancreatitis has higher chances of developing pancreatic cancer so if i have this hypothesis in my mind if i am going for that particular aspect then i will search everything from that angle and how do you come up with this broad um, hypothesis generation in general? Is it by, by reading literature and, and kind of like seeing, okay, this may indicate that there is some relationship. I should explore that as my next topic of research. So all the hypotheses has been generated in that way only that there are some discoveries going on. You are reading the literature and at the same time, uh, as a researcher, you figured out, oh, I have read this and I have read this too. And sometimes a lot of presentations we do attend. And in doing those presentations, we come to know that, okay, this is the phenomena which is happening. And I think my molecule of interest and my disease of interest might have underlying pathology like that. So it is uh, uh, I think it is the complexity as well as uh, thorough reading which brings majority of the hypothesis into the picture from the research point of view. Got it. Uh, we got a question from Josimar. Is it possible to search this topic per con country affiliations or country of patients? Okay, so uh, here is a the language there. Language, uh, so in, in case of PubMed, uh, if I go for my NCBA filter, no. So yes, permit can be used with the language, but at the same time, country-wise, uh, you you can look into it. But at the same time, I'm not sure. I have not done it. Got it. Uh, probably possible through mesh, uh, you know, in in some ways, or like uh, not mesh, but like complex query. Uh, yes. or if IDs we, or something. Yeah, if we can put advanced search kind of thing, it will be. And every article, okay, your question I can answer in a different way. So if I go through this article and if I see this one, affiliations, I know from where this article is coming up. I, I can come to know from where this has been published. Mm -hmm. but there, there is no quick way for you to uh, filter at the very uh, beginning of the search, right? And so no. there's no, mm -hmm. so you can, you can, you can make an assumption based on where it was published. But just because something's been published somewhere doesn't mean the population was based there because it could be based on another review. That's right, isn't it? So okay, so there are two things. One thing is if somebody has not done the research, they won't publish. Mm -mm. So it, it, it might be there, that pathology might be there, but they have not published it. Let's say I have put Canada here. So let's see, did we find something from there? So no, yes, see? Let's say I put Japan here. Yes, we can search it. Did, did you get my point? Yeah. So this is by the affiliations of the, the authors, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not where the, the study, uh, like let's okay. say if that's a clinical trial, most probably it won't. It, it will be in Japan only. If all the authors are from Japan, it will be in the Japan, more, more or less preferably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, we have another question from Mike Honey. Can you complete the research task solely within PubMed or do you need to copy data uh, out to make a doc or spreadsheet and work from that? Okay, so in case of, um, yeah, what we can do, we can, normally we get PDFs. But at the same time, see this, this is the article in the form we get it. Normally we prefer PDF formats. But yeah, at the same time, we can copy them and use it in the Word file. But directly converging, converting these PDF to Word file, uh, that is through P PDF converter, uh, but not like that. But at the same time, we get article, in addition to the PDF, we can get the article in this form. 
I think what uh, we were trying to assess if you're exploring new hypothesis, let's say the familial uh, uh, pancreatic cancer, um, and you have to read through, I don't know, 20 papers, mm -hmm. um, how do you organize the, the knowledge, uh, kind of the literature review for yourself? Is it a table or is it a document or something? Oh, okay. I go to my NCBI and save there. At the same time, I have a citation manager. Uh, so uh, let's say I'm writing any article. So for each and every article, we have a note to it. So um, um, let's go for this one. So I like this article. And all these articles are pertinent to me. Might be thousands of articles. So I'll select them. I'll send to the citation manager, create file. So now um, I have this file ready with me on my EndNote. Did, did I answer your question? Hello? Yeah, um, I, I wonder if you do like extracts from that paper or like main statements or, or something, or you just keep them in notes and kind of rely on, on remembering what, what the information was? Uh, I do make notes of my own. At the same time, I do save files, uh, uh, but uh, in addition to that, uh, I'm exactly, I do have a citation manager. So let's say I have created a file with thousand references, which I have read and reread and use it. So I, I created, let's say I have written a review article. So that review will contain each and every citation from where I'm taking it. Makes sense. Uh, Mike, th does that answer uh, your question? Yeah, that's great, thank you. Uh, Josimar, um, he, he or she are uh, asking many times, I wonder if it's possible to know the number of publications per country about the sum topic or keywords. Is there a quick way of doing it or must I search uh, uh, per country and count manually? I have not done that search, but at the same time, city or country, if I want to go, how many? I have not done that search. Yes. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey guys, I have a question. Uh, hi, Sequinder. Thank you so much for your presentation. It's amazing. Um, I just wanted to, you know, refocus a little bit on the different type of question. Um, so, are we looking at PubMed as uh, as a source database or as a competitive product? Because that's two different things, right? I assume that we're looking at the PubMed not as a competitive product, but as a source, That's as a right. huge database of all these publications, right? Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, because we're not going to compete with PubMed. It's, you know, it's, it makes no. no sense and it's impossible. But we probably want to discover um, what is missing from PubMed, right? What exactly. we can add to That's the product. Exactly, yeah. We're, lo we're looking at what PubMed's not doing well enough that we need to like supplement more than anything. Right, but we are going to actually uh, connect our product to PubMed and extract the actual articles from it, right? So one thing I would add to it, so there is one site called ResearchGate. Mm -hmm. So ResearchGate for each and every, I, I can go to ResearchGate and I tell them that, oh, I want these articles updates weekly, bi-weekly. So they keep on sending those all those articles with my keywords to my accounts on the weekly or bi-weekly basis. So if there are many things which are not there in PubMed, but they're in ResearchGate, where more networks and connections are there. I would say when, if, if you're interested in something like that, you should look into ResearchGate as well. Yeah, and also Mendeley does the same. They sent me the articles which I was looking for or I was working, because uh, you work with EndNote, right? I used to work with EndNote as well, but now I switched to Mendeley. It's just kind of like easier I think, for me. Yeah, it's very easy. Yeah, but, we do also have access to Mendeley, but that that is not that popular, just like EndNote. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, we, we probably should review those tools as well because they have a lot of cool features uh, in terms of aggregation different uh, data uh, about the articles you're searching. But yeah, that's great, thanks. So do you want to, to give us a tool and only some other day? Yeah, definitely, that's a good idea. Yeah, awesome. and, uh, and I, uh, this call, it wasn't it supposed to walk us through MBase? Yeah, but unfortunately we learned that the medical institution uh, Sequinder is a part of doesn't have subscription anymore. So okay. we shifted back to PubMed. But, but it, in, in brief terms, the Embase, is it something similar to um, PubMed? I mean, is it like same type of uh, search engine product or it's something completely different? Because I'm not familiar with it. I think it's Embase is much, much better uh, overall. Mm -hmm. So with regard to search queries and kind of wow. identifications. And it, I think uh, it is more towards the individual need suffice. Okay. And it's, it's all, you know, through Embase, I can also access any kind of articles, not just Elsevier, right? Uh, but uh, any sort of publications. I am not sure. I'm not sure. It's, because if it's just Elsevier, then, I mean, it might be great, but it also has its limitations. And we don't want to have that sort of like ties okay. to some publisher or something, because we want to be able to search any kind of data and uh, ex extract whatever is possible because many of these articles are not free as well. We have to remember that, that maybe uh, in most cases, we might have only the abstracts available to us at, at maximum, so. Actually, I need to leave now because I, um, I have another meeting in 10 minutes. So is it fine? Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you so much for, for giving us a tour today. I think uh, yeah. it was very helpful and kind of uh, built uh, further on the fact how complex all of these uh, systems are and how many different touch points you have to make to, to actually find relevant information. And this is hopefully something that we will be able to help with. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. It's been really interesting. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.